Deep in the woods, just outside Oakwood, Illinois, he masters his craft. Through curves and shadows, he finds the true beauty in sculpting wood. On this edition of Art Now, we'll look at the work of Rick Laramore. I'm Jenny Waller. Today's guest creates sculptures from wood. He began his training by working with resin epoxy, but his interest in nature and his work as a wetland ecologist for the Natural, Illinois Natural History Survey for 15 years and raising fruits and vegetables inspired his work in natural wood. He has been creating and exhibiting his work for the last several years at art fairs and galleries in the Midwest. His most recent show was at the Art Bank Gallery in Indianapolis, where he was the featured artist selected from 40 other artists during the month of October. We are delighted to have Rick Laramore as our featured guest for Art Now. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. We're very glad to have you here. It's good to be here. Tell us a bit about your background and how you started getting interested in this uh, sculpture in wood. I probably started playing with wood. Uh, my dad gave me a draw knife to play with when I was a young man, and, and uh, I managed to get through that without carving off any <laughs> body parts. <laughs> and uh, and then later in college, I worked, uh, majored in art for a few years, and and uh, did woodworking as well as clay and and other types of sculpture at that point. Mm -hmm. What kind of, uh, who were some of the artists that you worked with when you first started doing this? Um, well, at Parkland, uh, Juanita Gammon was one of the instructors there, and, and uh, Larry Bell. Um, and then during high school and, and uh, early college, I worked for Frank Gallo with several mm -hmm. friends. And Frank uh, was a world-renowned sculptor that casts epoxy pieces and human figures, and we all enjoyed sanding on uh, Barbie Benton and <laughs> Raquel Welch, and uh -huh. Frank did a life-size piece of Raquel Welch that he, that was on the cover of Time Magazine, okay. and went with him on the airplane and took up a whole seat when <laughs> he was delivering her. Oh, that's great. Did you go with her when you did No, that? I was just a... But sander you, and uh, polisher. <laughs> well, that's great. What a great experience. That's right. What other inspirations did you have to start working with wood? Well, I guess further art, just art inspiration. We, we spent some time in Europe when I was a teenager coming and going from Thailand and, and mm. uh, the works of Michelangelo and all those great artists uh, were probably some inspiration to me. And then uh, at, uh, I went to Ohio University for a while, and, and there was a uh, the main instructor there was a wood carver, David Hostetler, oh. and he's still he's in his late 80s and still active and has major pieces in uh, main public squares and so forth, mostly out east. Really, oh, but that's and he great. still has a uh, studio at in Athens, Ohio. Oh, that's great. Well, you certainly have had your uh, work exhibited all over in the Midwest, too. I have several galleries, but I'm still kind of getting some momentum going, yeah. I guess. Well, that's great. Um, why don't you tell us about some of your work? We'll look at some of your finished pieces, and then maybe you can tell us about the process of starting out and then how you end up with these beautiful finished pieces. Would you like to tell us about some of these? They have more close to finished pieces than uh, I might usually have at this point because of the upcoming show in uh, Carmel, Indiana. Um, and then these white, the pedestals and all are, uh, are here that I just finished painting and they'll go to that show and, and other shows uh, in the future. 
Gary Peters made these, uh, Gary from Champagne, and, and they, we worked on the design together, but the pieces all nest together, so they take up uh, very little space once they're all uh, put together. Right. Um, these are a couple of nice pieces, and I think it shows the different kinds of woods that you work with. Tell us about these. So, yeah, so this is, this is black walnut. This came from right around here, out in the woods, and uh, you know, looking for firewood and looking for wood to work with. Uh, but this, so I started off with a chainsaw and work a basic shape and try not to do too much with the <laughs> chainsaw that I regret. And then it can go to like a, a grinder, a disc grinder, and do as much with those power tools as possible. Um, but then it gets down to, to the, more of the hand carving, which is very much the more pleasant. Uh, aspect of the whole thing, and it can just play music and listen and, and carve. So this is black walnut, and this is uh, black cherry, which is also a, a, a native wood. This this uh, is from a board from some lumber I got in Indiana. Um, a little more detailed carving, and then. Um, but the but the colors of both of these woods I really like a lot. This, on the other hand, so this is basswood, which is not nearly as colorful a wood. It's sort of a, we'll see some in a little bit, but the sort of a cream color. But, but so this is painted basswood and uh, kind of interested in the shades and the shadows involved with the white color, um, kind of emphasizes the shadows. And so, at this point, trying some of that. Uh, we'll oh, see that's that interesting. This, this, is a, this is sugar maple, and this is uh, burl. The interesting colors in, in here are, are from this burl. It's sort of a mm. deformity in wood. And uh, it's turned. activated by bacteria and different things that create this burl, sort of a cancer-like thing. And it's very hard, has kind of an odd odor, um, but, but real interesting colors. And it's quite sought after for even little uh, pencils and stuff. Mm. People, wood turners use a good bit of that to, for little decorations. That has a, a whole variety of patterns, doesn't it? This one piece, different colors and shapes and patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very beautiful piece. Do you have a name for this one yet? No. <laughs> I put off naming them uh, as long as I can, and I'd like to get away from it. Oh, okay. Now, if I call it a, an elephant and somebody else thinks it's a, you know, that's fly. true. <laughs> That's, That's true. unfortunate that I called it an elephant. <laughs> I think you've got a good point there, Rick. But, so maybe I'll just call them like Bob or <laughs> five or seven. Or something. Works for me. <laughs> okay. The, the, the base is um, over here turning. This is a black, just granite, and a fellow that. Uh, Stone Fabrications in Champagne, Craig Garst makes the bases. And this is granite and this is marble. Mm. So that's, and that's all, uh, I, I like the two colors quite a bit, but it's hard to decide which, you know, color goes best. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that's another, yeah. sort of like naming them, and I think that's personal taste. So yeah. It would be nice if everybody had the option to switch them around. Can they do that? Uh, I'm not offering that as an option. Okay. <laughs> well, tell us about these along here. These are this well, is. Well, this is another. So this is the basswood again. Wow, and that's and very wide. interesting. Yeah, I like that. And then this is black walnut, and there's another one uh, where I saw this is a part of a sort of a crotch in the tree. And then this grain that's very dramatic grain that shows up 
Most of these will get another uh, coat of finish of uh, varnish before they're considered done, but but these grains and uh, figure that comes out in that is uh, pretty endearing. I think. It's I like beautiful. It and so this is all a natural part up here that no, you put down? No, I added that and that's okay. done with a, with a stamp. So I carved that out and then stamp that texture in. Okay. Wow. That is wonderful. And then here we have a nice little bird. I recognize this one. Both of these are still yet to get more finish and uh, and I just decided to color the eyes, to darken the eyes yesterday, and I'm glad I did. I like it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but it's all, it's hard to know when to quit. <laughs> um, there's always something else you can do, and then, but then once you've done it, you can't take it away. That's like, true. It's one of the problems with wood, where working with clay, you can Change. undo your mm -hmm. mistakes a little bit more. Yeah. That's quite a challenge. It's quite a skill that you have to be able to carve all of these different shapes and figures out of different kinds of wood and bringing out the beauty of the natural beauty of all of them is a terrific skill. Very good at that. Mm -hmm. Well, here we have some pieces over here too that look sort of interesting, very interesting. So these are, uh, these are some more of the basswood. Um, not quite finished, uh, but again showing the the shadows with the white. This is this is the basswood here, so you see that it's this these this piece is quite a ways from being finished, but um, to the, it's not especially colorful. It can be it can be pretty enough, but it's not really known for its color. It, lots of Lots of uh, carvers work with basswood because it's fairly soft. N nice to work with that way. The uh, gouges work through it very nicely. As opposed to this is uh, this piece is Osage orange, and it's very hard and mm -hmm. hard to work with. It starts off the wood is a very bright yellow, and then it, it uh, as it ages, it gets that nice dark orange and all. So how old would this piece be, uh, the wood? Um, well, the, the, it's not an especially old tree, but the, um, I cut it just down here at uh, my folks' cabin um, three years ago or so, four mm. years ago. <clears throat> so it's taken that much time to change from the orange to getting this. But it, it starts doing that pretty quick once the light starts getting to it and okay. it starts to darken up. Um, but it's, yeah, it's really very hard and, and you know, weather resistant, known for its values, fence post, of course, as one of the, and the uh, hedgerows that kept the, acted as fences, living right. fences and windbreaks. Yeah. Which they're kind of disappearing. Farming practices are Make it more Changing. practical to get rid of them. It's well, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, that's great. You want to tell us a little bit about the fish? Is that is that a fish? Ba I was no, is that I also basswood? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So it's also basswood, and and then these are each carved in here, and I like the shadows of that. And um, yeah, it's kind of a a new creature of some sort, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think you are quite that the... Evolution will find its way <laughs> towards that eventually. Okay, very good. Well, this is wonderful to see these pieces, and I know, I, do you have any idea how many pieces you've done that you've had in galleries over the years? Rough idea? Oh, I mean, most of them, since I really just got back started with this, I, you know, I probably have 30 pieces in galleries now, and uh -huh. um, maybe a few more than that. And right. Then, uh, 20 or 30 to take to the shows right. coming up yeah. at the end of the month. Right. 
Well, maybe we can go and see how you begin this process. We've seen some beautiful uh, finished pieces, or almost finished pieces, and so why don't we uh, go to your workshop here. We are in your workshop out here in the woods where you gather a lot of your materials, but you also have a, a bench back here where maybe we can go back there and uh, see the kind of work you do to get started. Well, here we are in Rick's uh, studio, and he's going to tell us a little bit of, uh, about the resin work he's done. This is one of the older uh, epoxy pieces that I did way back, and I uh, just thought I'd show more or less what, what it is. And so it, with the epoxy, mostly people work in clay and then make a plaster mold from that clay that would look more or less, the clay would look like this, and make a plaster mold. Get the take the plaster mold off and then put the epoxy resin inside the plaster and then you end up with this shape and then it has to be sanded and polished and and uh, finished like that afterwards. But um, the the dust and uh, fumes and all are a little different from wood. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily healthy, but uh, the finished product it can be really nice. This one's all covered with wood dust, but it can be you know, really pretty and shiny. Are you doing any of this work now? Or are you strictly with wood? Right now I'm just strictly doing wood. Yeah. But I, I'm interested in doing some clay also. Right, good. Mixing things up a little bit more. Yeah, good. Well. And then this is my workbench where I do more of the carving aspects of, the, of uh, woodworking and um, this is a piece that I've been working on that Jenny was going <laughs> to. Uh, I didn't do that. You did it, Rick. <laughs> it's beautiful. It. How did you get it to balance like that? It's, a, it's just a secret. And it, <laughs> it's karma. It's oh, it's karma. Oh, well, okay. That explains it all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually hard to balance. And it, I mean, Sometimes. I think that some of it has to do with this paper. It seemed to st stop. So anyway, I'm still working on that okay. aspect of uh, getting it together. But, but will you, how, would you, how will you put it together then when you decide what shape? Well, I want it to just balance and not have other structures uh -huh. holding it together. Right, that way. right. So you're going to be able to do that? Put a little glue on it or? Well, just, I mean, it, just like that. It, it did. It was well balanced. Yeah. yeah. Good. So we'll see. Okay. I'm still working on it. Okay. <laughs> um, so I have this set up here that, and I don't claim to be an expert woodworker really, but um, you know, keep learning and trying to get set up. Um, I took a class with Chris Pye in uh, at the School for Furniture Craftsmanship in Maine a couple of years ago. Mm. One of the things Chris emphasizes is lay your gouges with the, the uh, edges towards you and I think that that's mainly so you can see what it is uh, you're grabbing, you know, which, mm -hmm. which gouge you're, you're after. So like this piece has a different gouge in it than this one, for instance. Right. And so you would just look at that and know which one you want to pick up so all of these have different mm -hmm. gouges Depending on them. Depending on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so you get set up in, in different, in whatever vise and stuff after this, after you get this down and then you uh, kind of, you know, work the wood so that it's not uh, going against the grain. And so like that, it's fairly shallow edge on that gouge and then this one is a, called a, a veiner. That is round and fairly deep, for this. so that cuts more of a of a trench, mm -hmm. like that. And then so, a lot of different things can be done, and then and you get, you know, you kind of start off. I usually start off with some sort of idea, but then uh, that changes as time goes on. Yeah and come up with other ideas and so it usually uh, or seldom ends up 
be in the what I thought it was. Is that right? Be. Yeah. And the wood might either tell you some, give you ideas, but mm -hmm. it also might, you know, might end up with something about the grain or that uh, would prevent you from doing what you're doing. Where with clay, you would more know, you know, that you could go ahead and do whatever your idea was. But the wood could can limit. Uh -huh. The scope of the project, sort of. And it can make you change your mind. Mm -hmm. I suppose so, you've had a few like that. You started making this thing and then you ended up with something totally different afterwards? Quite a few like that. Yeah. Almost every one. Is that right? <laughs> Changes some. <laughs> well, that makes it a very exciting career, I would think. Makes it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So this is the basswood here mm -hmm. and that, that uh, Pieces, those are, that's black walnut. It's beautiful. I want to see this when you put it back together and have it all balanced again. Why don't you? No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let you do that. It's always, it, uh, when I've tried to do it with a bunch of pe people watching, it's usually pretty hard to do. Yeah, exactly. It's great. So after you get to this stage then? Well, and then we get uh, towards sanding and um, you know, different stages of, of sandpaper and all, and then this, after it was, uh, you know, really sanded smooth, then uh, I'd probably paint it, but for uh, sometimes other finishes, like even wax for, for uh, basswood, a lot of people just, oh, really? just use wax. Oh, really? Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, do you use any other color besides white on basswood? I haven't. Okay. But... I mean, it certainly lends that's, itself that's, to the white and the shadows like you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, and more painting is an interesting, that's another possibility. Right. Something I'm really exactly. interested in. Well, this has just been great to come out here and visit with you, Rick. Thank you so much for letting us come to your workshop and learning about your pieces. And uh, Christmas is going to be coming up in about a month or so, pretty soon. So. Uh, you'll probably have some uh, places, there'll be places on your website where people can go and purchase some of these lovely pieces for the yeah. Christmas holidays. Yeah, and, and locally, uh, Cracked Glass and Champagne oh, on good. The First Street will yeah. have pieces. has work and, and yeah. probably will have more good. as so. the holidays approach. Right. Well, uh, it's been wonderful to be out here with you, Rick. Thank I'm you so much you for in, uh, having us come. And we want to thank all of you for watching Art Now. So long.